Welcome to Vadial Vagaparai. We will see about dipole moment and shapes and geometry of the molecules and how to connect between polar and non-polar molecules and their geometries in this video. Let's begin this session with a question from May 2020, wherein the question says very clearly, we have to fi find the following set which has a zero dipole moment. So there are different sets of molecules that are given here and we have to find out which among these set is having a zero dipole moment. And for this, we have to first and foremost find out what is the polarity of a bond and what are polar molecules and how a polar molecule will have a dipole moment and when will it have a zero dipole moment and how dipole moment is connected to geometry and shape is what we should know before we answer this question. So in this video, what we are going to see is the definition of dipole moment and how to assign dipole moment and how to connect it between the geometry and shape of the molecule and how to find out whether a molecule has a dipole moment or not. So first, the polarity of the bond. So we all know in our lessons, we have studied about non-polar covalent bonds. And in case of homonuclear diatomic molecules like hydrogen, hydrogen, chlorine, chlorine, the electrons in the bond are equally shared between the atoms because they are the same atoms. And so in these cases, the molecules are called as non-polar covalent bonds or non-polar molecules. And on the other hand, we have certain molecules which are heteronuclear diatomic molecules such as HF. So in case of HF, if you see hydrogen and fluorine forms a bond and this fluorine is actually more electronegative or it is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. And so it has more tendency to withdraw this pair of electrons which is there uh, shared between them towards the fluorine atom. And as a result, what we find here is the bond is not absolutely covalent. The bond is not absolutely covalent. Rather, hydrogen acquires a partial positive charge and fluorine will acquire a partial negative charge. So because such molecules acquire partial charges, such molecules are called as polar covalent bonds or co polar covalent molecules. And this is a classical example of what I have told you here. So the electron density is more shifted towards fluorine atom and hydrogen atom is electron poor. And so the electron density is lesser in this side and it's more towards the electronegative fluorine atom. And as a result, we see there is a partial positive charge on hydrogen and a partial negative charge on fluorine atom. And this kind of polarization, this is called as polarization because covalent compounds or covalent bonds are non-polar, are considered to be sharing of electrons and so they are non-polar. But in this case, we see the possibility of polarization because of differences in electronegativity between hydrogen atom and fluorine atom. And this results in the dipole moment. And such molecules will possess dipole moment. Now we are going to see how this dipole moment can be assigned. What is its mathematical expression? So the mathematical expression of the dipole moment is charge into distance of separation and it is assigned a new value. And the unit of dipole is d by, this is popularly used, but the SI unit is Coulomb meter. So uh, this is uh, for mathematical calculation of dipole moment. But then when we are talking about uh, geometries, how do we express dipole moment? What is the way we assign dipole moment? So again, we know we wrote HF and when we write HF, uh, as I told you, the electron density is more towards fluorine atom. And because the electron density is more towards fluorine atom, we must remember the Dipole moment is actually denoted by an arrow mark where the head of the arrow uh, symbolizes the negative part of the molecule and the tail of the arrow has a vertical line which signifies like a positive charge 
or the partial positive end of the molecule. So the expression for dipole moment in chemistry is an arrow with a vertical line, meaning the direction of the arrow tells the direction of electron density. So this is the example which I have again shown here. So H has a partial positive charge and fluorine has a partial negative charge and the dipole moment of this molecule is toward fluorine. So this is how dipole moment is expressed. So when we are having a diatomic molecule, we have no issues because one atom uh, could be positive, another atom could be negative. But in case of polyatomic molecules, how do we assign dipole moment? What could be done? In case of polyatomic molecules, the dipole moment does not only depend upon the individual dipole moments of the bonds, okay? But they are also dependent on the spatial arrangement of the bonds. When I say spatial arrangement of the bonds, it means the geometry of the bonds. So in such cases, the dipole moment is a vector sum of the dipole moment of various bonds. So this is the understanding. So I'll explain to you how we can uh, understand this definition of dipole moment in case of polyatomic molecules. So here, water is taken as a classical example to show how the dipole moment is uh, a vector sum of the individual dipole moments. So in this diagram, you see there is a representation of electron density. I am drawing water molecule for you to understand better. So water is having a bent structure, we know. From our VSEPR theory, it is a bent structure. And because it is having a bent structure, and we know oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, the dipole moment of each of these bonds is toward oxygen atom. And that is what you see here in this representation also. In this representation also. The, it is toward oxygen atom. And then we also know oxygen has, a, has two lone pairs of electrons. And so these lone pairs of electrons also exert an orbital moment. So there is a moment due to the lone pair of electrons on oxygen. And as a result, all of them reinforce together and move outward or away from oxygen atom. Or all the dipole moment are reinforcing in the same direction. So the blue uh, dipole moment signifies the molecular dipole. So in the sense, for water molecule, there is a definite dipole moment because each of these dipole moments of the respective bonds are actually adding up to the total resultant dipole moment of the molecule or the net dipole moment of the molecule. And we, we know that water has a dipole moment of 1.85 D. This is another example of carbon dioxide. We know that carbon dioxide has a linear geometry. So how is carbon dioxide having a linear geometry? We know from our VSEPR theory, we can tell very clearly how carbon dioxide acquires a linear geometry. So because carbon dioxide is acquiring a linear geometry, now we would want to know in which direction the dipole moment is. So from carbon to oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative. Similarly, the other carbon oxygen bond also has a equal dipole moment. So in case of carbon dioxide, there are two dipole moments and these dipole moments are pulled in the opposite direction. See here in this particular picture of electron density, the dipole moment of carbon dioxide is equally pulled by the oxygen atoms on both sides. Why? Because of the linear geometry. Okay, here water is having a bent geometry. Again, here also there are three atoms. But then here water is having a bent geometry. And so the resultant dipole is reinforced. Okay, it is added up and then you get a total added dipole moment. Whereas in case of carbon dioxide, the one side is cancelled by the other side. So what happens to the dipole moment in carbon dioxide? 
the net dipole moment is zero. Or, or in other words, we will co connect dipole moment with polarity. So, carbon dioxide is a non-polar molecule. So, when the dipole moment is zero, the molecule is non-polar. When the dipole moment is non-zero, then the molecule is polar. So, this is how you connect between dipole moment and polarity. And you can also know that knowing the geometry of the molecule, you can very easily tell whether the molecule will have a dipole moment or not. So, we will see a few more examples. So, now com comparing the dipole moments of beryllium difluoride and boron trifluoride. And we all know from our VSEPR theory, beryllium difluoride is a linear geometry molecule. This is the same like that of our carbon dioxide. Again, fluorine is electronegative. So, the electronic, uh, electronegativity is more towards fluorine atom. And so, the dipole moment is shown as an arrow toward fluorine. So, the net dipole moment cancels each other. And so, the dipole moment of beryllium difluoride is zero. Similarly, when we talk about boron trifluoride, again, boron trifluoride geometry is trigonal planar. So, the molecule is uh, planar and the three fluorine atoms are arranged on all three sides. And again, we, what we usually will expect is because fluorine is the most electronegative element, blindly students will say uh, these molecules have a dipole moment. But then when you see the geometry of these molecules only, you come to know that the resultant dipole moment is the one which is necessary for us to find out whether the molecule is polar or not or non-polar. So, in case of BF3, again you see the bond angle, this is trigonal, this is a linear, uh, the beryllium difluoride is a linear geometry and uh, in case of boron trifluoride, it is trigonal planar. So, the trigonal planar uh, geometry is uh, a geometry where all the fluorine atoms are pointing at opposite direction. So, the resultant dipole moment of this molecule is somewhere in between like this. So, the added value of the dipole moments of this fluorine atom and this fluorine atom will be somewhere in between here. So, some somewhere in between here, which will be cancelled by the other fluorine in the opposite direction. The same thing will hold good for uh, the, uh, the other directions too. And that is the reason why the dipole moment of beryllium difluoride and boron trifluoride is zero or both of them are non-polar molecules. So, their dipole moments are zero. Next example we will see. Ammonia and NF3. This is a very popular and classical example. Uh, let us take, uh, again, ammonia is having a triangular, plane, uh, sorry, pyramidal geometry because it is uh, having a lone pair of electron and because it has a lone pair of electron, uh, it is uh, deviating from the tetrahedral geometry and so it has a pyramidal geometry. Similarly, NF3 is also belonging to the same kind of pyramidal geometry because it is again all the three hydrogens replaced by fluorine atom with the nitrogen having a lone pair of electron. As I told you in the previous case wherein uh, we see fluorine atom, we believe that it will this these molecules will have a higher dipole moment because fluorine is the most electronegative element and there are three fluorine atoms so the molecular dipole will be higher. But we see the geometry plays a larger influence in the dipole moment and the values are not as we predict. So, let us begin with ammonia molecule. Again, in case of ammonia molecule, uh, the dipole moment is toward nitrogen atom. The electronegativities are more toward nitrogen atom. And we also have the orbital moment which is on nitrogen atom and so all the resultant dipole moment 
are on one side and so the mu value is non zero or in other words ammonia is a polar molecule whereas when we talk about the nf3 so in case of nf3 we know uh, the dipole is towards fluorine atom because of the differences in electronegativity and on the other hand the lone pair of electron also exert an orbital moment which is away from nitrogen atom so you see the three three electron withdrawal effect of the fluorine atom is actually you know slowed down or nullified or uh, decreased by the orbital moment of the pair of electron so as a result when we compare ammonia and nf3 both of them will uh, are polar this is also a non zero value this is also a non zero value this is also a polar molecule but then when we compare nh3 and nf3 which is more polar we will know this between nh3 and nf3 nh3 is more polar than nf3 this is more polar why is nh3 more polar than nf3 or it's why is nh3's dipole moment higher than nf3 it is because in case of nh3 the resultant dipole is reinforcing all bond poles whereas in case of nf3 the resultant dipole is against the uh, dipole moment of each of the bonds and as a result the polarity decreases in case of nf3 so now we have seen a set of molecules and their dipole moment now we will go back to our question the question is very clear and it has a set of uh, molecules and now we have uh, if we explore each of the options ammonia we have seen beryllium difluoride so ammonia uh, beryllium difluoride also we saw water also we saw then 1,4 dichlorobenzene so this is an organic molecule uh, let's wait uh, again in option 2 boron trifluoride hydrogen fluoride carbon dioxide again in all these cases there is an organic molecule that is given i will discuss about it uh, in a few minutes again in option 3 we have nitrogen trifluoride then you have beryllium difluoride again water again last is boron trifluoride beryllium difluoride carbon dioxide so we know uh, let me put a tick on all those molecule which has a zero dipole moment so ammonia beryllium difluoride has a zero dipole moment uh, so ammonia does not have so the question is which of the set so the first set is not a set because ammonia has a dipole moment again in the second set we have boron trifluoride which is having a zero dipole moment but then we know hydrogen fluoride is having a dipole moment so the second set is also not possible now coming to the third set third set again nitrogen trifluoride is the first option so that rules us out because we know nitrogen trifluoride also has a um, uh, dipole moment and of course water also has a dipole moment so the only option that is left out is the fourth option but then uh, i have given the answer without even uh, considering the organic molecules that are discussed here so in the fourth option what do we see boron trifluoride again it is zero dipole beryllium dipole difluoride is also zero dipole and carbon dioxide now coming to the uh, organic molecule which is 1,4 and uh, 1,3 uh, dichlorobenzene so this is 1,4 dichlorobenzene and then let me draw 1,3 dichlorobenzene okay this is 1,3 dichlorobenzene so in in from the bo from both the structures again you see the dipole moment of the carbon chlorine bond and the carbon chlorine bond are symmetrical on both the sides whereas in this particular case in case of the meta substituted compound we see the dipole moment are somewhere resultant dipole will be somewhere in between these two dipoles in the sense 14 will have zero dipole or it is a non polar molecule whereas 1,3 has some dipole moment so it is a non zero value and that is the reason why 
in this particular option, 1 comma 4 dichlorobenzene is having a zero dipole moment. So, we have seen what is a dipole moment, what are polar and non-polar molecules, how the geometry of the molecule affects the dipole moment and how polar and non-polar molecules can be identified by connecting dipole moment and geometry. Like and subscribe to our channel.